So last Thursday, I was talking about Venus or Aphrodite and how to recognize her. And one of the very last things that I mentioned was that sometimes she can be recognized when a golden apple is included in a painting somewhere near to her. So what's the deal with the golden apple? Well, today we are going to talk about this painting here, which is by the great Flemish master. It's by Rubens. And this dates to 1635. So you should be able to, I'm gonna bring these young ladies up more closely. They are, of course, goddesses, all of them. Um, but if you joined last week, then you might be able to recognize which one Venus is. And of course, I've turned off comments, so I don't know whether you're getting it or not, or even whether you would comment or not. Um, she is the one in the middle, and you possibly can't see very well, but she is identified in, in this work because she has flowers in her hair, pink roses, and also pearls in her hair. So pearls, Venus, roses, Venus. All um, attributes that identify her. There is also, I'm gonna go back to the main picture, this little fellow down in the left corner who kind of looks as though he might be stealing their clothes. This is Cupid, so this is Venus's son. So he's not stealing their clothes at all. Maybe he's just tidying them up. I'm not entirely sure what he's doing down there. Um, who knows? The big question is though, what on earth are these three goddesses doing in the middle of a woodland clearing, um, disporting themselves naked for apparently the delectation of these two fellows over by the tree on the right hand side? Well, yes, that is a very good question. And to answer that question, we need to roll back in time um, a week or so to a wedding that took place on Mount Olympus. Now, most people were invited to this wedding, but there was one goddess that was missed out. And the goddess that was missed out was Discordia. She does what she says on the tin, does what her name suggests. Uh, and she was very miffed. Um, and so she decided to do what she does best or did best and she created mischief and the way that she created mischief was to put a beautiful golden apple somewhere very prominent within this wedding reception with a tag on it that simply read to the fairest. And now each of these three goddesses and we haven't identified the other two yet um, each of these three goddesses claimed the apple must be hers. So Venus claimed the apple must be hers. The goddess with her back to us um, is Hera. So she is Zeus's wife, sort of the queen of the goddesses. She claimed that this apple must be hers. And then the goddess to the left, the lovely front view, uh, this is Athena or Minerva. So she's the goddess of war, but sort of, um, if there's any any such thing as wise war. So she's a goddess of war and wisdom as well. Um, you can see that she's got a shield. I'm gonna go back actually um, to this. You can see, I hope, or maybe it's just been, excuse me, <coughs> maybe it's just been cropped. She has a, a shield that you can see right over to the left-hand side with an image of Medusa in it. And also in the tree up, um, to the left hand side there's an owl but I don't think you can see that unfortunately you might be able to spot it if I go back to the main back to the main image um, so Venus and Hera and Minerva all claimed this apple there was a squabble and eventually they went to Zeus and they said, you know, I'm a Ferris, I'm a Ferris, you know, Zeus, 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 which one, which one, which one, which one? He thought quite wisely, oh my word, I cannot make this decision. No good is going to come of this, no matter which one I choose. Ah, I am going to ask somebody else to make this choice for me. And the person that he asked to make this choice is the chappy sitting down 
in front of the tree and he is called Paris and Paris was known to have been very fair very untainted by um, by the sort of the, the ways of the the court on Mount Olympus or any other court for that for that matter um, because he was brought up as a, a, a shepherd um, Paris was in fact the son of the king of Troy and so you see where this is going and um, and there the oracle had spoken and the oracle said that he would one day bring, bring bring about the downfall of Troy and so his father thought well let's get him right out of the way um, and have him brought up as a shepherd so that he can't be anywhere near Troy and you know create havoc um, the oracle the oracle always has to be right though you know you cannot ever escape the the oracle so he was brought up as a shepherd known to be fair Zeus sent his messenger which is the guy behind him in the in the hat with wings on so this is Hermes or Mercury sent his messenger with the golden apple and told Paris that he had to make a decision as to who he was going to choose as the the fairest of the the goddesses and so this is the moment that he is choosing the the fairest only he's not being terribly I mean okay so he is sort of handing the the apple in the maybe in the direction of Venus who's in the middle um, but it's a little bit ambiguous um, and in fact originally it, uh, it was even more ambiguous but I'll come on to that later um, so he does eventually hand the apple to Venus, but this is not an easy decision for him to make because the goddesses are all equally as beautiful. They're all equally as lovely. And in fact, in this painting, they're all equally as lovely. I'm going to go back to the, uh, the main, um, back to a close up of the goddesses. They're all equally as lovely because they are in fact all the same person. So Rubens used his second wife, a lady called Helen Formont, as the model for each of these three goddesses. He absolutely adored her. She was 37 years his junior, um, but he painted her very often. So this is where we get these Rubenesque curves from Ellen Formal and of course he he thought she was marvellous both from well, not both but from the front and from the side and from the back so this is the way that he has he's painted from every single angle so we can enjoy it from every angle um, so so Paris had trouble deciding which one he was going to choose and so the goddesses then sort of gave him incentives and Hera said to him well you know I am married to Zeus so I can give you empires I can you know I can give you land I can give you, you know, countries whatever you want and he's like mm, you know what I'm a, I'm a shepherd I think I'm gonna pass thanks very much Athena or Minerva said I am very good at battle so I can make you the best battle commander anywhere in the the whole world and he's like yeah Frankly, I'm a shepherd. I'm, I'm not that interested, but, you know, thanks for your offer. Venus says to him, I can give you the most beautiful girl in the world. Paris is like, now you are talking. Now you're talking. And so, as I say, it's a little bit um, ambiguous in this in this painting but he does in fact hand the apple to Venus and Venus then orchestrates um, his meeting or that Helen falls in love with him in one story um, she's abducted in, a, in another story um, but anyway the upshot is is that Helen uh, Paris steals Helen away from her husband who is the king of Sparta and this of course kicks off the biggest war in the whole of Greek mythology which um, is the the Trojan War which lasts for about a decade. So that is the story of the um, the golden apple and why the golden apple is associated with Venus. Um, but as I say, in this painting, it's odd because it's sort of a little bit, you know, she, she's not taking 
the apple from Paris. And in fact, originally, the, this, um, this scene was even more ambiguous. Uh, so, as I say, this was painted in 1635 and it was painted for a, um, a, a merchant, a Portuguese merchant called Diego Duarte. He died and the um, uh, art dealer to, well, a, a French art dealer, uh, purchased the, the painting and sold it to the Duke of Richelieu in Paris. And when it got to Paris, it was in fact at the centre of an almighty great big row. This row was already raging. Um, it was mostly people that loved the artist Poussin, who was very much about drawing and he was, um, he was quite affiliated with the French Academy of Arts. So um, very academic style of, of painting, which was appreciated in France. Rubens, Lusa, not so good at drawing maybe, but far more, um, far more eloquent with color and with, and with feeling and with emotion really. Um, so they really didn't like Rubens. And then when this painting turned up, they were, oh, well, they, I don't know who they were, I think uh, the Duke of Richelieu must have um, displayed this work because it, it was it caused outrage and that isn't too big a word for it um, and so it was changed but originally originally this work um, had for a start it had some little putti up in the trees and the figure of the winged messenger, so the figure of Mercury, was sort of gesturing towards the goddesses. So it had more of a, um, a voyeuristic feel to it. Secondly, the image of um, the image of Paris was just. He had a, a wide, floppy brimmed hat on. His shirt was over both arms instead of one arm, or just with the shirt sleeve rolled up. And so the French said, well, you know, this is just ridiculous because these goddesses wouldn't undress in front of a mere shepherd. He needs to look far more princely or kingly. And so, so the, these bits were changed. Um, and also you can see just about here. So if you look just above the peacock's head, you can see the arch of his foot, where his foot would have been. Um, and his, in his leg, sort of this ghost, this ghost leg that has, um, has appeared as, um, as the paint on top of it has become more translucent. So this is how his leg was before in this kind of very, it has to be said, very odd pose, sort of poking out the side. And the French weren't having any of this. They said that he just looked ridiculous. So, but the biggest, the biggest um, change that was made was that, in fact, he originally was holding the apple in his lap instead of actually handing it to anybody. And for the French, that was just absolutely ridiculous because this was supposed to be a narrative and the narrative was supposed to be moving on and this, you know, and this just sitting with this apple in his lap was not moving the, mar the narrative anywhere. Uh, and so they just, so the, it was, the image was changed. It wasn't changed by Rubens. Rubens died in 1640. It was changed somewhere around the 1670s. Um, but the reason that Rubens actually um, depicted Paris with the apple in his lap was because he was very involved and very concerned with politics and he felt that the, the powers that were in his beloved Flanders weren't really making very good decisions and you know and obviously the decision that Paris makes was a very big one albeit he didn't realize that and so he was picturing this this moment of thought and of, um, of reflection that he felt that um, that his government should be doing rather more of before they made the decisions that they made. So an interesting story and an interesting story, um, an interesting story about the about the painting. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to turn you back on now. Turn on commenting. Oh, so sorry, a couple of minutes longer than it should have been. I'm trying to keep these down to 15 minutes, but there's so much to say about that painting. There is so much to say about that painting. Um, 
it's um, it's in the National Gallery and so therefore that also means that if you are minded to you can go to the National Gallery website and look it up um, Rubens Judgment of Paris there are several actually Rubens did probably um, seven or eight seven or eight um, versions of the Judgment of Paris because it was popular amongst patrons going back to what we were talking about last week. It wasn't just one nude goddess, you got three for the price of one, but uh, the thing is is that the whole thing could also be wrapped up rather fantastically in this idea that, well, no, it's not really about the nude goddesses, it's about um, it's about the beginning of the, the Trojan War, you know, this very important war. So it mixes up nudes with war, which apparently was far more acceptable. So it's an ever thus. Um, Oh, thanks, Mary. I'll look forward to seeing you on a tour soon as well. I will. I will. Um, so next time I thought, as I mentioned um, Hera, I don't know whether I mentioned that she's recognised through a peacock quite often. So I thought on Thursday we could explore that a little bit more. Um, and certainly I mentioned Minerva with her shield and her owl um, so I thought on Thursday we could talk about those two goddesses and how they how they got their attributes um, and and some more examples of those there have a great day everybody I think the weather is getting nicer now it was a bit gray this morning such a contrast to yesterday so um, have a great day have a great week and I will see you on Thursday I will post this on stories and also onto my feed See you soon. Bye.